Well, welcome back, everybody. This is episode 13, part three. Now, I'm starting off with an 8B pencil here. And I'm just going to lay down a little bit of base tone for the darkest areas that you uh, could see on this fabric here. Now I'd like you to notice how the areas that I am drawing with the 8B is I'm mimicking that dark pattern that I see in this patch of cloth. Even down to those two little marks, um, those little rectangular shapes. And now it's time to blend and as I blend it starts to fill in those little white areas and it will appear as the tone is getting darker, which to our eyes it technically is. But it also smooths out that base tone and that way it will allow me then to go in and start pulling out those fabric lines like we did in the previous two parts. Okay, now I'm going to want to get in with an even darker pencil and I'm going to use a Woodless 10B here uh, for just a few of the areas that has even a darker tone than the 8B. And uh, remember when you blend it will lighten it some. So while it looks like the tone is a little darker than the reference here, just wait and see. It will lighten up as I take that Q-tip and get back on it. But meanwhile, I just want to get in these little tiny patches throughout the difference uh, of the tones, the, the variation of tones uh, that makes up this fabric. And uh, here I've indicated uh, where some of that is. And I'm just going to go in there and, and apply this darker chart, uh, excuse me, graphite to those areas and then blend them in. All right, let's go back to blending and using the Q-tip here, I'm going to just smudge it all into that base layer that I put with the 8B. And you'll see that it just starts to tone it down just a little bit. 
though it does keep some of its integrity, which is why I went darker so that it would do that. And uh, while it is slightly darker tone in some areas, when I start to pull it out with the low tack frisket tape, it will lighten it even more. And here I'm demonstrating a little pattern that I'm going to put in there just as I did in parts one and two. If you haven't seen parts one and two, I highly recommend that you do so before continuing to watch this video. The links are down in the description below. Now notice that I'm just trying to duplicate little areas that I see on the reference. The direction of those little lines, the little pattern lines when they loop and so forth, giving that appearance of a wavy garment. And then I'm going to tone those lines down because you don't want them to be bright white. So I'm going to tone it down with the Q-tip. And here I'm going to pull out some highlights with my kneaded eraser. And that's for this bright area that you see right here. And so I really want to get that brightened up a little bit. Okay, and now I'm going to use this extra hard um, charcoal pencil here from Generals. It's a 2H. Uh, the reason I use this pencil mostly is to get real fine detailed uh, de demarcation areas. You see the separation between the uh, fold of the one side of this garment and then you have the part of the garment that we're dealing with right now which is actually closer to us it's folded over and that charcoal pencil helps give it a much more finer line a finer division between those two segments of the garments and now I'm back to blending with my q-tip again and you know just trying to make sure that I get the variation of tones just right to match what I see in the reference photo and tone down a lot of those bright white fabric lines because uh, it's really not white. They're, they're actually uh, mid-tones if you really look close uh, at the reference photo. Okay, and that's just a little cleanup that I'm doing there. I always tend to do that as I go along. Okay, now this is a good time to start pulling out that little fuzzies that you see coming off the garment there and uh, it, it should show up pretty nicely with that dark soft charcoal background uh, but because it is soft charcoal it is a little hard to uh, pull it off and so I have to often go over the same spot over and over and over again with the tape but that's not a big deal as you can see here and I'm trying to mimic some of the obvious threads that are sticking out but overall just putting random threads uh, and frayed uh, material here and there 
uh, is all you really have to do to give the illusion that uh, you you've got some uh, you know material that has these little uh, phrase uh, coming off and, and you can see how the two looks pretty pretty decent. Now while I'm sitting here blending with the q-tip I do find that using this um, paper blender here gives me a little more control in certain areas and it, it's just like drawing with a pencil. Uh, so I'll use that to uh, you know, blend and move uh, material around into certain areas that I think needs to be toned down or needs to uh, actually show up a little bit more in detail. And so it's very handy for that. And then uh, let's see what I'm going to do is I'm looks like I'm going to go back in with my uh, looks like a 9B there. Yep. And Let's just go and put a little more dark material down in certain areas. And then of course I'll blend again and then pull off those little uh, thread lines once again. Now you can see that you know my actions here are pretty much a repetition. It's I go in, I lay down material, then I blend it or move it around like with this paper blender. I'm going to move it around to areas that I want it to be. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to lift some off, use a kneaded eraser or use my tape, get some more pattern lines in there. Uh, and again, I can't emphasize enough to keep looking at that reference photo every couple of seconds and that's what I'm doing is I'm pulling it off looking at the reference pulling it off and it's just a repeat of these you know two three steps over and over until I get that image to look pretty much exact to the reference and I'm you know I'm going for that realism and so you just keep adding those little layers push it around pull it off add some more push it around pull it off Now I'm just going to use this electric eraser here just to get a little more of the material off. I, I want those particular areas to be as white as possible because the highlight is really strong on the original image. And my erasers themselves don't pull off as much as the electric.
Okay, I'm going to come in here with my 9XXB pencil. And with this, I'm just going to put in some of those little dark details that I happen to see um, in the little areas that you see. Look like little, little tiny squares. And so I'm just kind of going in there and, and just kind of duplicating what I see to the best that I can. Uh, the whole idea is just to give the illusion that uh, you're getting all the details in, that it's the same as the original. And that's what the eye will catch. And if you don't get it real perfect, I would not worry about it. You just you want the illusion. Everything is the illusion. So that's what I'm doing with that 9XXB right now. It's just getting those really dark areas. Because when it's all said and done, you want a variation of these tones that just make things look natural and real. When you just have one flat tone or just two tones, that's not real. When we see things in real life, we see all kinds of different shades all blended next to each other and in, in, in different shapes and sizes. And, and we certainly want to convey that image to the viewer's eyes. Well, that's going to do it for part three. And uh, if part four is already uploaded, you'll see the link for that down in the description area. And I want to thank you again for watching this video. And please smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I'll see you in part four. Bye.